Hi there. Welcome to English Worship Service. We are so glad that you could join us this Sunday. And we are so thankful to God that uh, despite going through this pandemic, lockdowns and curfews, uh, God has been faithful with us. And I believe God has been faithful to you and your family. Uh, I don't know about you, but I pray and I hope that all of you are doing well during this time of pandemic, during this time when many of us are uh, discouraged, disappointed and even though we long to meet our friends and families uh, it's been a tough time for all of us but we pray and we hope that in due time and in God's time things will come back to normal few announcements even as we uh, begin this Sunday uh, Neil would be leading us into a time of worship from in few minutes from now uh, just a few announcement that I like to share with you all Coming Tuesday, we'll be having our Tuesday Bible study at 7 p.m. I'll be putting up uh, our time of discussion and our time of Bible study uh, on Google Meet uh, on our Facebook page very soon. So kindly note that if you are interested and if you are free on Tuesday evening at 7 p.m., uh, join us in a time of uh, Bible study as well as time of praying together on Google Meet. Uh, just to let you know that we have been studying the book of Philippians and we are at the fourth chapter and this will be the last chapter of the book of Philippians and it's one of the most encouraging books, one of the most, uh, uh, one of the most uh, wonderful books that Apostle Paul uh, had, uh, wrote to the church at Philippi. Uh, it's a book that I'm sure will encourage you, will encourage, it encouraged me a lot so I trust and I believe that uh, it will encourage you as well it's not just a bible study it's not just uh, one person who will be doing the bible study but it's a time that we spend we try to understand each word each phrase every sentences and we spend time discussing on that particular passage so we hope to see you if you are interested if you are free on tuesday evening at 7 p.m uh, last uh, just yesterday we had our uh, time of, of uh, discussion amongst the youth uh, just yesterday we had a wonderful time of discussion uh, regarding the, uh, the internet addiction uh, we have been doing uh, not on a regular basis but every alternate Saturdays we have been as a young people we have been meeting at 7 p.m. every Saturday uh, every alternate Saturday what we are doing is actually we are taking one topic and as young people, we all come together on Google Meet and we discuss on various topics. So yesterday we had a good time of discussion on internet addictions and so many of our friends have joined and we had good time of discussion and we also and looked at all these issues in our lives in the light of God's word. So next Saturday, we may not have it, but after that, or probably in the second Saturday, uh, we'll be, uh, we're gonna have this uh, a youth meet at Google Meet. So if you are if you are interested, and if you know anybody who's young and who is uh, really going through a difficult time, or who has a lot of issues in their life, maybe they can join us into a time of discussion. So uh, we'll be putting up very soon uh, for all those infos and for all those uh, events that are coming up. We have a Facebook page. Uh, you can just see it's it'll be flashed on your screen right now so do visit us on our Facebook page uh, for all the updates and for all the informations and for all the uh, happenings uh, in and around us so do keep in touch in our Facebook page as well uh, without any further ado uh, Neil uh, will be leading us in a time of worship and uh, we pray and we hope that as we sing these songs uh, may you be uh, may God be glorified in our midst so wherever you are at home or, or wherever you are at the moment, uh, spend some time as, even as Neil comes and leads us into a time of worship. Over to you, Neil. Good afternoon, friends. Uh, welcome to this worship service. Um, as you can see, I'm at home and not in the church like how we normally used to do. Uh, that is because we are still under uh, lockdown and we're still following the protocols. Um, Hopefully in the days to come and in the weeks to come, things will be better and 
and that all of us we can get back to our normal lives and i've chosen very common songs so i believe all of us can follow but before we begin um i just would like to remind myself and remind each one of us uh, from the word of god uh, that is from first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 18 which says to rejoice always and to pray uh, continuously and also to give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for each one of us in Christ Jesus. It's not the best of time to rejoice, it's not the best of time to give thanks as we all can see what's happening around us. Uh, but I believe even in the Bible, you know, when all these things about giving thanks and about uh, rejoicing and praying continuously, I believe uh, as we look at all the context of the scriptures and backgrounds, you know, uh, those people who have written all these things in the in the Bible, um, it was not written in a time where things were quite rosy and easy going for them. Uh, you know, all this, all this encouragement and words were written uh, even in a difficult time uh, when they were going through uh, difficult times and difficult moments. So I believe uh, that even in this difficult time, as we go through this COVID and other challenges in life, uh, you know, God wants to focus on him. God wants us to uh, seek his face and God wants us to rejoice in him and be, and, and be prayerful uh, persistently and also, you know, to give thanks in everything, in every situation, in every moment. And when we do all these things, you know, uh, we, we realize and we acknowledge that we need him and we cannot do things in our own strength and we cannot, you know, uh, go about things according to our own wisdom and strength. So as we begin this worship and as we sing the songs, uh, may God continue to encourage us and remind us uh, that he's always with us and he would never leave us nor forsake us. So the first song that we're going to sing is 10,000 Reasons, a um, very common song. Uh, so wherever you are, uh, you can always um, go to Google or if you know it by heart, well and good, uh, you can sing and follow. And I might make mistake, I might, I might make mistake or I might go off tune sometime. So please bear with me, I haven't done this in a long time. So yeah, shall we begin this song, 10,000 Reasons? Yeah. 
God, we just want to thank you for this time. Father God, we just want to thank you for this opportunity. Indeed, God, there are so many reasons to thank you for. There are so many reasons, Lord Jesus, uh, that uh, we can be thankful for, for the things that you do in our lives, Lord. And we thank you for everything, Lord. Thank you for your sacrifice on the cross for us. Thank you for your love on the cross for us. And thank you for the hope that we have uh, uh, because of the resurrection, Lord Jesus. And also, Lord, Thank you for reminding, Lord, that you are our shepherd and you are our guide, Lord. And indeed, Lord Jesus, uh, at this time, as we look around us, as we look around the news and as we look around the messages that we get every day, Lord, in our WhatsApp and social media, Lord, everywhere there's so much of wickedness, everywhere there's so much of uh, people who are being killed, people who are dying, people who are struggling and suffering, Lord Jesus. And Lord, everywhere we look around, there's not much hope left in this life anymore, Lord. But Lord, we thank you that our hope is not in this world, but it is in you, Lord Jesus, and that you are our shepherd, and we have everything we need, Lord Jesus. And Lord, that even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, that we will not fear, for you are with us, your rod and your shepherd, your rod and your staff, they comfort us, Lord Jesus. So Lord, once again, I uh, just want to thank you for this time. Just want to thank you for this opportunity. And Lord, we pray that may you continue to open up our hearts and prepare our hearts, Lord, uh, throughout this service, Lord. And may you be with your servant, Reverend Nikki, also. And may you use him mightily, Lord Jesus, as he shares your word, Jesus. So 
Thank you so much once again for this time. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Uh, we pray and surrender and submit the rest of the time into your hands. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Neil, for that meaningful time of worship. Uh, just two simple songs, and we trust that uh, even as we spend some time in worshiping and singing, God, uh, we really felt the presence of the Lord. Uh, now, let us go to a time of uh, studying God's Word. Today, we'll be studying God's Word on the topic, the power of contentment. You know, the passage that we have taken today is Philippians chapter 4, verses 10 to verse 13. And even as we study uh, the book of Philippians, uh, this will be in context of our main theme, navigating life through a pandemic. And the, one of the things that people really struggle, uh, one of the things that uh, many of us are going through is, uh, is a time of restlessness, uh, a time of disappointment, a time of discouragement. As believers in Lord Jesus Christ, we are, we are asked to be a patient. We are asked to uh, remain strong in the Lord. But at times, uh, being human, we always have this struggle of being impatient. Uh, today's passage is more in the light of that. One of the things that we human beings struggle is to be content with what we have. Contentment doesn't come naturally to all of us. And we have to be pay, be patient. We have to be, uh, we need to inculcate this, this ability to be content in our lives. You know, whether, no matter, uh, whether be poor or be rich, you know, nobody is content in their life. A poor person will never, uh, uh, never has enough. So their life is never a life of contentment. Uh, even the rich people, even those people who have resources, who have means, who have wealth, still then, you know, they will, you will never find them to be content in any ways. Even those people who hunger for power, you know, give them the, all the powers of the world, still they won't be satisfied with that power. There is a struggle in human beings, a struggle to be content. Today, Apostle Paul will remind us the power or the secret of being content. And let us look at what Paul reminds us from his words from the book of Philippians, the letter to the church at Philippi, chapter 4, verse 10 to verse 13. Let us read together from Philippians chapter 4, reading from 10 to verse 13. This is what Paul says, and I'll be reading from NIV. He says, I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I'm not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content. Whatever the circumstances, I know what it is to be in need. And I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content. In any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want, I can do all things. I can do all this through Him who gives me strength. Now, as you read this passage, Paul is reminding each one of us as he writes this letter to the church at Philippi, encouraging them to be content. Let me remind you a, 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 a slight, a, a brief background of the of the church at Philippi. This church at Philippi were one of the churches who helped Apostle Paul financially. You know, you would remember Apostle Paul when he wrote this letter. He was in prison, 
And the church at Philippi, when he was in prison, he sent people, he, they sent their fellow workers, uh, and they sent uh, money, they have sent a few things to Apostle Paul when he was in prison. So that whenever, wherever he is, at least he'll have money to be able to get out from the prison. Or he'll have enough money to be able to go out from uh, the situation that he's in. Now, Apostle Paul, at this moment, he desired the people at Philippi that even though they had enough, even though they were wealthy, even though they had resources, Paul is reminding them that still then, we need to be content in our lives. Despite having resources or in our times of need, when we are totally broken, Paul is reminding that we need to be content in all the circumstances. Now Paul is saying this, the three reminders that Paul would give us in this passage. And Paul says, this is what Paul says. The first reminder that Paul says, the Apostle Paul says, is in verse 10. This is what he says. I rejoiced greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. Now in verse 10 and verse 11, Paul is saying the number one reason that he's content, the number one, the secret of contentment in life, or the power of contentment comes, number one, when you are joyful. And not just being joyful, but you're joyful in all the circumstances. Number one reminder that Paul gives us is be joyful in all circumstances. We tend to be joyful only when things are going right and things are going on our, on our way. Then is a time when we are joyful. When things do not happen, we never express joy. We are frustrated, we are disappointed, or we are dismayed. But Paul is saying, whether you are in a position to be happy or whether you are in a position of sadness, be whatever the situation or be whatever the scenario be, always be joyful. The number one secret to be content in life is that if you have the ability to be content in sadness or in your joy full times, whether in your times of, uh, uh, in times of need or in times of your, uh, when you're, you have enough resources, whatever the situation be, whatever the scenario be, Paul says, if you can express or if you can live joyfully in all the circumstances, then you are somebody who expresses contentment in all the scenario. The church at Philippi had sent resources to Paul. They had sent money when he was in prison so that he can bribe his way out from the prison. Or he can pay his uh, fees or he can just bail out from there by giving him the money that the church at Philippi had sent. Or he could do all these things. Paul had ample resources to get him out of the prison. But you know what? Paul didn't use that means. And when you look at Paul, his gesture reflects his willingness to depend on the Lord. What Paul is trying to portray here is that yes, I have the means, I have the resources, but for me, I want to depend on the Lord. And this dependence comes when you have contentment in your life. And when that contentment only can come when you rejoice in the Lord. So whatever the situation, whatever the circumstances, 
whether we are going through a time of pandemic or whether uh, whether we are uh, whether we are not able to go to our schools or colleges or to our workplaces whatever the situation be you and I learn to be joyful in all the situations my friend contentment will come on your way we all want to be content with our situation in life and generally people use the word contentment when in terms of your resources in terms of your wealth and people say with little amount lord help me be to be content lord with whatever i have lord help me teach me to be content we use the word content only in terms of wealth but here paul reminds us we need to be content not just in our terms of our wealth but we need to be content in our situation as well we need to be content with whatever circumstances we are in paul reminds in philippians 4:10 and 11 i rejoice in the lord i rejoice greatly in the lord that at last you renewed your concern for me indeed you were concerned but you had no opportunity to show it and i find contentment whatever the circumstances is number one reminder that paul says is that be joyful in all circumstances whatever be the situation whatever be the circumstances always be joyful that takes us to our second reminder a second secret of being content is this in verses 12 i know what it is to be in need and i know what it what it is to have plenty i have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation whether well fed or hungry whether living in plenty or in want secondly paul says be content in all circumstances firstly he says be joyful now he says in verse 12 be content now as you look in uh, as you look in the verse 12 of chapter 4 paul is reminding each one of us that in your life there will be times of uncertainty, there will be times of discouragement, there will be times of poverty, there will be times of uh, being, uh, 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 there will be times of riches, there will be times of sadness, or there will be times of uh, uh, a joyfulness. Whatever be the situation, Paul says, be content. The usual complaint that you and I will hear from people most of the time is this. When, when somebody else gets much better things than us, for instance, if uh, somebody else has scored higher marks than us, or if somebody else has got uh, better gifts than us although we have done the same thing you know, there's always a, a discontentment in our hearts we always express discontentment we always say i also did the same thing well it's so uh, it's so not right when i get lesser than my other friends when we have both done the same thing together why is that my friend has to get a better uh, better gifts than me why is that my friend has to score higher marks than me when we have written the same thing you know there's always a discontentment amongst us and the discontentment comes when we see a differences uh, in our lives when we see there is a uh, there is an inequality but Paul says whether you are whether you got lesser than somebody else, whether you got a little, uh, inferior uh, gifts than the others, be content. You may not have got the best things in life, 
you and your friend have done the same amount of work but your friend has been paid better than you which automatically infuriates us but Paul says in that circumstance in that situation be content with what you have Paul had learned to be content in all circumstances because his contentment was not dependent on circumstances the reason that Paul was able to be content Paul was uh, uh, was able to be uh, was able to put a smiling face despite the situation despite the circumstances in his life was because he never put his focus on the circumstances his focus was on the Lord and that's why Paul he's he told the church at Philippi he told the Philippians not to worry about anything and he told them not to focus their attention on the circumstances rather put your focus on the Lord it's not easy to be content in the situation or in the uh, in the times that we are in but again Paul reminds us that don't focus on the situation and the prevailing situation may grip you and me the prevailing situation may cause you and me to be discouraged but Paul when he says I'm content in all the situation in other words he reminds us let not your focus be on the prevailing situation rather put your focus on the Lord and if you can do that you'll be able to remain content or you'll be able to live a contentment life in all the situations in all the circumstances which leads us to our final and the third point Paul says be strong in Christ in all the circumstances firstly Paul reminds us that to be content you first need to be joyful in all the situations in all the circumstances secondly in verse 12 Paul says to be content you need to be content in all the circumstances don't be content when you your wants are fulfilled but when you are longing for something when something is not fulfilled in your life when something is not working in your life when others are uh, are getting uh, are are faring better than you Paul says in those circumstances be content with what you have and the only way we can be content is when we put our focus not on the circumstances but on the Lord thirdly Paul says be strong in Christ in all the circumstances to be joyful to be content we need strength and humans and a strength from our own cannot help us to cannot help us to attain that level of joy that level of contentment in all the circumstances we need the strength that is beyond this world so which is why Paul says in chapter 13 let's read chapter uh, let's read verse 13 of chapter 4 I can do all this through him who gives us strength Paul is reminding us that yes to be joyful in all circumstances is not a cakewalk to be content in all circumstances when you have been uh, you have been a failure all throughout your life and you have never tasted success in your life and it's difficult to be content but Paul says you can be content in all circumstances to do all this thing you need a strength that comes only in Christ and the strength that comes through Christ is the strength that will be that will enable you to be joyful in all the circumstances that will enable you to be content in all your circumstances whether in poverty or in riches whether you're well fed or you're hungry 
in all your situations, Paul says, God, Christ will strengthen you. The strength in Christ, the strength that comes through Christ is the strength that enables us to do, to be joyful, to be content. Which leaves us with this question today. These times of pandemic, times when we, some of us have lost our dear ones, and some of us whose friends or families may have lost their relatives or their friends, this difficult time, can you and I be joyful? Can you and I rejoice? Can you and I crack a joke, put a smiling face in this difficult situation? I think not. Can you and I be content in this prevailing situation? I'm sure at the beginning of this year, many of you had planned to do something that many of you had dreamed uh, to establish yourself, whether in your business, whether in your career, or whether some of you had desired to go out and to do your further studies, or there were plans, there were ambitions, but that didn't work out. Are you content with your present situation? I think not. But Paul says, you and I will find joy. You and I can be content in all our circumstances when the strength in Christ is with us. My friends, let us depend on our Lord even now as well. Let us all continue to ask God to give us the strength that comes through His Son, Lord Jesus Christ. In Christ, we have the victory. In Christ, we have our hope. It is the strength in Christ that will carry us through this prevailing situation. It is the strength through Christ that will help us not to quit, but rather to grow stronger from strength to strength. May God bless each one of us. May God bless you and you and your family. May God give strength to all of you in Christ to be joyful in any situation in your life. To be content with whatever circumstances you and I are in. Let the strength in Christ be with you and with your family. Amen. Even as we close our service, Let's look to God in prayer. Let us pray for the situation prevailing in our midst. Let us pray for our dear friends and families who have been, uh, who have, uh, who have contracted of this virus. Let us uh, remember to pray for our friends uh, who have become, who have been really serious and have been hospitalized. Let's pray that God would heal them. God would uh, bring them back uh, and uh, bring them back and. Uh, uh, bring them back to their health. Let us also point, let us also remember to pray for our uh, our frontline workers. Uh, many of our doctors, nurses, and the frontline workers uh, have fallen sick, have have taken ill, have become uh, have become COVID positive. Let's pray that God would heal them, God would restore them to back to their health, that they may be able to join and able to fight this deadly virus as we all reeling in. Let us pray that uh, God would really bring this, uh, this pandemic uh, end. Even as a lot of people are still going, uh, taking vaccination, let's pray that everyone will be vaccinated. Even as, even as uh, uh, the news is going around that the third wave will surely hit us, let's pray that even if the third wave comes, uh, people will be all vaccinated and all will be in, uh, in a position to fight back. And everyone... Uh, uh, will be uh, 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 everyone's health will be all in place as well. So even as we think about, is even as, even as we uh, pray for all this concern, uh, even as I pray, let us all pray in spirit for all these concerns. And if you have somebody in your mind, you can also pray as well. So let's look to God in prayer. Now, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you, Father, for the words that have come to us. 
this afternoon. We pray and we ask that, Lord, that may we remain joyful in all the circumstances of our lives. Lord, it's not easy to be content when things are not going on our way, when we look, and look around us, when we find ourselves confined to our, our homes, our house, and when we look around and see people in other nations and other places where they can freely roam around, Lord, there's a sense of uh, discouragement that looms our heart. But Father, oh Heavenly God, we pray that Lord, give us the heart of contentment. Lord, help us not to put our focus on the prevailing situations, but help us, Lord, that we may put our focus in you. This is our prayer, Heavenly Father, that even as we pray for our various friends and our families, and to the friends of our fa friends, that those who have uh, been, uh, who have taken ill, who have been contracted of this virus, Lord, we pray for your healing hands upon their life. Help them, Lord, that they would, they would recover soon, and that you will restore, back, restore them back to their health. We also want to pray for our uh, friends and families who have lost their dear ones due to, due to, the, due to COVID. We pray that, Lord, it's a difficult time. Uh, such, in such a difficult time, Lord, when words fail to comfort them, Lord, you are our source of our strength. You are our hope, Lord. May you comfort our friends and families who have lost their dear ones due to the COVID. We pray, Father, that so many of our friends all around our country have lost their dear ones. Many people have lost their life and many people have lost their battle against this virus, Lord. We pray and we ask, Lord, that you would give comfort to the bereaved families, families who have lost so many of their dear ones due to this COVID. Many children have been left or in orphan. Many, uh, many families have lost their, their sole bread honor of their house. Many families have lost their... Uh, their, uh, their children, Lord. Many families have lost uh, so many dear uh, members of their uh, homes. We pray and we ask that, Lord, that you would comfort them in such times of difficulties, in such times of their loss. We also want to pray for our frontline workers. We, want, we thank you, Father, for the life of our doctors, nurses, and all those frontline workers who have been working around the clock, Lord, despite being understaffed, despite uh, not having enough manpower, they have been working, Lord, uh, day in and day out to be able to uh, meet the needs of those who are sick. We pray that, Lord, you would give them strength. Those who have taken ill, those who have, uh, uh, who have uh, contracted this virus, oh Lord, we pray that you will restore them back to the health as well. Help them, Lord, that your strength and your healing may be upon them as well. Heavenly Father, at this moment, we want to pray for our dear friends and families, wherever they are, whether in Tura, whether in Meghalaya, or all different parts of our country, Lord. Be with them, Lord. Help them, Lord, even as uh, our country surges through these difficult times. Uh, we pray for our leaders, Lord. Uh, be with them. All our uh, state leaders, Lord, that you give them the courage, you'll give them the determination, Lord, to be able to work around the clock, to be able to bring uh, con uh, to be able to contain this pandemic and Lord able to uh, bring uh, a relief in this, na in this nation Lord through their works and through their service. We pray Father that uh, even as the vaccination drive is going on, we pray Father for your hands upon all the people who have been going around uh, who have been going around and, uh, and uh, 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 vaccinating people. We pray, Father, that more and more people will come forward to take the vaccination, that our whole nation will be fully vaccinated, Lord, that even if, even if the third wave comes, Lord, we'll be all protected, oh, Lord, we'll be all be able to contain this virus as well. So, Lord, this is our prayer and this is our desire. Even as we all remain hopeful in you, help us to always remain content in all the circumstances. Give us the strength that comes through only to your Son, Jesus Christ, so that, Lord, in all the circumstances of our lives, we may remain joyful and we may remain content as well. Thank you, Father, for speaking to us. Thank you, Father, for listening to our prayers. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you for being with us, and we pray and we hope that you'll join us next Sunday as well. Till then, thank you for uh, joining us in this time of service. 
We hope to see you next Sunday. Goodbye and God bless.